Hi, it's Kerry. More amazing dinosaurs and an Archaeopteryx. Love the new Cetacosaurus? Stay for the fun ending when the volcano erupts with smoke and fire. Can you tell me how many Acrocanthosaurus in today's video? Subscribe and give a thumbs up if you like volcanoes and dinosaurs. I would really appreciate any help that viewers can give me in translating videos. Thank you. Giganotosaurus When Giganotosaurus was alive, the most common plant eaters in South America were the Titanosaur sauropods. The teeth of Giganotosaurus are flat and serrated to enable it to easily slice through the flesh of its prey. These kinds of teeth are commonly seen in the Carcharodontosaurids. They would tear the flesh from the bones and leave the bones behind. I love all the great detail on this model. It's really nice. Ready for action. Giganotosaurus was a descendant of Allosaurus from the Jurassic period. It was one of the biggest known members of the Carnosaur genus and one of the biggest known theropods of all time. Bigger than Tyrannosaurus rex and Carcharodontosaurus but not as large as Spinosaurus. Tyrannosaurus was one of the largest meat-eating dinosaurs that ever lived. It was a ferocious predator with a thick heavy skull and 4 feet or 1.2 meter long jaws which had a powerful bite force capable of bone crushing action. T-Rex's serrated conical teeth were most likely used to pierce and grip flesh and you can see lots of teeth there. Tyrannosaurus lived in forested river valleys in North America during the late Cretaceous period. Spinosaurus is known to have eaten fish and most scientists believe that it hunted both terrestrial and aquatic prey. Evidence suggests that it lived in both water and on the land as a modern crocodile does. The distinctive spines of Spinosaurus, which were long extensions of the vertebrae, grew to at least 1.65 metres, which is 5.4 feet long, and were likely to have had skin connecting them, forming a sow-like structure. Multiple functions have been put forward for this structure, including thermoregulation and to attract mates. Archaeopteryx is one of the oldest known birds. It seems to be half bird and half dinosaur. It had teeth, three claws on each wing, a flat breastbone, hanging belly ribs and a long bony tail. Similarities to dinosaurs were its teeth, skull, lack of a horny bill, flat breastbone and ribs attached to its skin. Acrocanthosaurus lived during the early Cretaceous period in the tropics of what is now known as North America. It was a fierce predator that grew to 40 feet or 12 meters and weighed 4 to 6 tons. It was the largest theropod in North America before the evolution of the Tyrannosaurus. It had a large head with a 4.5 foot long skull and 68 thin, sharp serrated teeth. It also had strong arms with three fingered hands with long sickle-like claws, powerful back legs and a long slender tail that balanced its body when it ran. And here's another Acrocanthosaurus. Acrocanthosaurus had large neural spines on the vertebrae of the neck, back, hips and upper tail. These spines may have had attachments for powerful muscles, similar to those of modern day bisons. It is not entirely clear what the purpose of these spines and muscles were. Possibilities include fat storage, communication or temperature regulation. It was a large fierce predator that could kill even large sauropods. Acrocanthosaurus may also have been a scavenger. My 
Omad Junga Thullus, Omad Junga Saurus lived during the late Cretaceous period. It had a short broad snout and wide skull. Notice the single rounded crown horn on top of the head and the relatively short arms and stocky legs. Its skull, jaw and teeth suggest that it would have attacked its prey by using a vicious bite and hold attack. The apex predator in Madagascar 70 million years ago was Majungasaurus, a killer that at times would even eat their own kind. It is classified like the well-known Carnotaurus as an abelosaur. Acrocanthosaurus. Its forelimbs and shoulders were also unusual and seemed to have been very strong with lots of cartilage but quite stiff with very limited movement. It is thought that the forelimbs hung down and inwards and would not have been used for seizing prey. Acrocanthosaurus may have instead seized prey with its jaws and used its forelimbs to prevent the prey escaping, kind of hugging it. It is also possible that Acrocanthosaurus may have held the prey in its jaws and used the claws in its forelimbs to tear gashes into the prey. Diabloceratops was built like a typical ceratopsian. It had a large neck frill made of bone. It had a small horn on the nose, perhaps a second horn in front of that, and a pair of relatively small horns above the eyes. The skull is deeper and shorter than that of any other centrosaurines. Cetacosaurus was a herbivore that lived during the Cretaceous period. It was found in places like China, Mongolia and Siberia. Its name means parrot lizard. It was about 8 feet or 2.4 meters long. It was bipedal and equipped with a powerful beak on its upper jaw. One fossil specimen that's been found in China had hollow tubular bristles about 6 inches long in a single row down the back of its tail. I'm not sure if this was on all species or just on this one particular species. Pachycephalosaurus lived during the late Cretaceous period. It was a herbivorous, dome-headed dinosaur with a skull up to 10 inches thick, a tiny brain and large eyes. It had bumpy knobs on its snout and along the back of its skull. The forelimbs were short and it had a stiff tail. Pachycephalosaurus had a thick skull bone, although it was quite porous and fragile, and was most likely used for headbutting other animals in their side and not to their heads to avoid injuring themselves. Pachycephalosaurus grew to about 15 feet long and may have weighed roughly half a ton. They were herding dinosaurs that lived in small groups in coastal and upland regions and would run as their only form of self-defence. Tyrannosaurus Many scientists now consider it likely that T-Rex had feathers on at least parts of its body due to their presence in related species. Juveniles may have been feathered and then shed the feathers and expressed only scales as the animal became larger and no longer needed insulation to stay warm. However, subsequent discoveries show that even some large tyrannosaurids had feathers covering much of their bodies. It is possible that the extent and nature of feather covering in tyrannosaurids may have changed over time in response to body size, a warmer climate or any other factors. Volcano alert! Remember to tell me how many Acrocanthosaurus in today's video.
thank you for watching my video please stay right on here at super fun reviews for more great videos see you again soon please subscribe and share my videos on any of the other social media platforms that you like to visit thanks once again